Over the last number of years, I've read countless books on money, ranging from more basic financial education all the way up to how to optimize government benefits, tax planning and retirement, and all of that. In this video, I'll go through a few lessons from four of my favorite books that have helped me become a better financial planner, and I hope you can apply a lot of these to your life, whether you're building up for retirement or already in retirement. The first book I recommend is Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. And I know a lot of you have read this book and a lot of you enjoy this book as you've made that comment on our videos previously. But again, a great book to read if you're getting close to retirement. And again, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, it's a great book to read because it talks about, you know, the first principle or point I take out of it is that you need to enjoy experiences and not just save them for retirement, but enjoy them through retirement. And as we talk to people, build up financial plans for Canadians, a lot of the time it's, hey, you know, Joe and Sally, you're gonna have a lot of money in retirement or you're gonna have more than you think you need. Why don't you start doing some of your travel now? We never know when our health is gonna drop off, when the ability to travel and do all that stuff. So what Bill talks about is, you know, make sure you're enjoying the experiences throughout your lifetime. Now, a lot of you, it's a slippery slope because you're doing too much early and you're not saving enough for retirement. And that's why it's important to understand, like, am I on track for retirement? Do I have a little bit of extra? Can I kind of like spread out the, you know, the, the life experiences a little bit more than I currently am? The second thing Bill talks about is the spending plan, which is basically optimizing kind of your spending and budget and all that to your lifestyle. So versus, you know, saving everything for the future or saving it for who knows what, it's, it's again, saving it for some for future life endeavors and putting some aside for today's life endeavors. So he calls it the savings plan. Again, a bit of a unique situation, but I also encourage all of you to make sure that you're looking forward and currently. And you know, I get the question a lot, Adam, what's the difference between a financial planner and an accountant? And in general terms, I would say, look, an accountant is more looking at what happened last year and what are we doing kind of next year, the next six to 12 months, maybe. Whereas the financial planner is looking more further out. Like we want to look at next year, but what does, you know, what you do next year will affect you in five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, as far as retirement planning, tax planning, cash flow planning, all of that. So that's, you know, I, I kind of take Bill's comment here and, and kind of amplify it a little bit to make sure that what you do next year allows you to enjoy next year but also build for future years so that you can enjoy those as well. The third piece Bill talks about is legacy planning with a meaningful impact. So, you know, die with zero, the whole concept is to die with zero in your pocket. And Bill still talks about, no, no, you want to leave a legacy. It may not be a financial legacy though. It may be relationship, experiences, other things outside of the financial realm. So you may pass away. And I know many people that have passed away, I go to their funeral and they didn't die with much, but man, that funeral is packed out. I know a couple off the top of my head where there was two to 3,000 people there. Again, it's not the financial impact, it's the relationships, the experiences, you know, the one-on-one -on -one time that those people had that that's the legacy that they left. You know, you don't have to leave a legacy financially to impact people. You can leave a non-financial legacy and make a drastic impact on people. The second book that um, I want to talk about today is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I know probably 90% of you have read that book uh, by Robert Kiyosaki. And a great book, something that a lot of younger people read, but I encourage you to keep reading it. It's a book that you should read every three to five years, if not more often, just kind of dip back into that to get the principles behind it. But principle number one that I took out of that, and I think you need to as well, is the importance of financial education. And that's really why I got into this business and why I started this YouTube channel is to educate, to give Canadians and people across the world more information to save better, retire better, how to pay less taxes, how to strategically walk into retirement and the nuances and the challenges of doing that. And I always say like a lot of you are trying to learn, you know, what's a covered call and what's, you know, a, a complex tax situations and all these high level things, but the foundation of your financial education is very weak. And so I encourage all of you, make sure you have a strong financial foundation. And, you know, maybe you have a good foundation, but maybe your spouse or Kamala partner doesn't. Let's educate them first. So you guys come into this as a team, uh, much better equipped so that you kind of start building up from there. Before we jump into point two on Rich Dad Poor Dad, I just wanna say if you're watching our videos, enjoying it, getting value out of it, 
please subscribe to the channel. More than 50% of you that watch our videos are still not subscribed to the channel. We're trying to get to 100,000 before the end of the year, and I know it can happen. If, if all of you that are not subscribed, hit subscribe, hit the like button, join our community. We'd love to have you. We do release two videos every single week around retirement planning for Canadians uh, coast to coast. The rat race versus financial independence. And this is what Robert talks about a lot where most of us are in the rat race. We're working, we're getting a paycheck, we're taking that paycheck and we're spending it on the bills that we have to pay. And it's this constant kind of hamster wheel that we're in. He talks about you need to transition, find a way to transition out of the rat race into financial independence. And what that means is that your investments, things are paying you. You don't have to work to earn money. And this is, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's whole thing, really. If you, if you summarize the book as a whole, it's, you know, don't go to work to get a paycheck. Let your money work for you. So if you can take one thing out of that book as you go through it, that's probably going to be it. Like, how do I make my money work? And it's all about saving. How do we get more money into savings and let that money um, start compounding for us? And for those of you that have done that, especially for you closer to retirement, you've been able to see, hey, I put 200000 over my lifetime into my RSPs and now it's worth 500000 My money made a lot of money for me. And that's really an encouragement. That's why you need to start at a younger age start building up wealth and let compound interest work for you. The third piece that Robert talks about is assets versus liabilities. And he said, you know, the wealthy people build assets, things that make money for them. Whereas the middle class folk, basically they buy liabilities. They buy homes, they buy cars, they buy things that cost them money. And so Robert's big push is look, instead of going out and buying a new 60, $80,000 car, why don't you go buy a used car for 10 or 20,000 take the difference and then go buy, you know, his book because it's a bit outdated, you know, put that as a down payment on a rental property and, and collect rent, that kind of thing. Maybe a bit more challenging nowadays, but again, take that 60,000, throw it in your tax-free savings account, you know, invest it wisely and let it grow over time tax-free. So that's kind of the concept be behind, you know, an asset versus a liability. And I think a lot of us have to be careful how much liabilities we take on, whether we're paying cash for it or not, that cash could be working for us in other areas. And you know, I live in the lower mainland here in BC, and I can say first time, like when I drive around, the amount of a hey, homes are, you know, one and a half to three million dollars, and then how many people will have 150 to 250 thousand dollars of vehicles in their driveway, not in their garage, but on their driveway, and they're rinse and repeating those every two to three years, probably through a lease, maybe they're rebuying. And I assume most people can't afford this. And we've worked with some of these people and I can tell you, most of them cannot afford it. And so they're buying these liabilities that are sinking them, but you know their neighbor has that, so they need to get it, or their friend. They, they need to have that new car. So again, there's kind of two layers to this. You, know, you don't need what the Joneses have. And secondly, even if you have the cash, does it make more financial sense for you to scale back on that purchase and use the difference to invest in an asset that will generate income growth and all that for you going further? My third book for you, and I'm going to go through this one a bit quicker because it is a different kind of book, but it's Personal Finance for Canadians for Dummies. And I've shown this book earlier uh, in this uh, YouTube channel, but it's a great book to just get the financial basics around everything kind of personal finance, financial planning, retirement planning for Canadians. So if you're a Canadian and you want to kind of level up your financial game, your financial education, it's a great book. It puts everything in layman's terms and it walks through step-by-step step everything you need to learn. Three things that I'll highlight out of that book that it does is first, it creates a solid financial foundation, which again, I talked about earlier, a lot of you don't have, most of you don't have a proper foundation. And the reason for that is because we're not taught it. No one ever teaches us financial education, how to save, compound interest, taxes, mortgages, all this kind of stuff. We don't learn it in school. You, 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 know, you come to YouTube, places like this to learn it. And so another resource for you would be this book. The second thing I want to talk about all this is investing strategies for Canadians. So it does go through, you know, different ways to invest, different options out there. A lot of you don't comprehend, like, how do I invest? What are these terms? This book is great for that. And then tax planning and retirement. Again, it goes through kind of basic concepts, which is great because when you meet with your financial planner, you have a basic understanding. You know, when we build plans for people, it's always easier for us to kind of build a more comprehensive plan, have a deeper conversation with the client if they have a general idea of what terms are, what things are. Like if you have that basic knowledge, you can have a deeper conversation with your financial planner. 
So get this book and get that deeper knowledge. The fourth and final book is by far my favorite book from the last few years, and it's Retirement Income for Life by Fred Vitesse. And it's a wonderful book. And a lot of the principles, not all of them, but a lot of the principles that Fred talks about in his book, we apply in our financial plans on a daily basis. And we've done that for many years. Someone actually introduced us to this book and I was like, wow, these things come together really well. So if you wanna have a good understanding about our financial process, the retirement planning process, read, read Fred's book and you really understand like why we do what we do. And Fred backs it up, Fred's an actuary, wrote this book many years ago, um, has updated it. It's a great book and it'll give you a lot of tools, knowledge and strategies for entering into retirement and how to do it properly. So one of the things that Fred talks about is longevity risk and retirement income planning. And talking about, you know, many of you might outlive your retirement savings if you're not careful. And longevity is a thing. A lot of you I talk to, again, when we talk about like CPP timing and that kind of stuff, a lot of you say, no, I'm taking it at 60, I'll be dead by 70. But what happens if you live into your 90s, into your hundreds? Like, we're getting closer to more and more people living into their hundreds. I have a client next month turning 99. It's going to happen. If it happens to you, can you afford it? So Fred talks about that and strategies to kind of build a plan around that. The second thing that I took out of this book that we implement here is optimizing retirement income. And this is a big one because for a lot of you, as you enter up to retirement or come up to retirement, you have one paycheck. And so, you know, the amount, the proper amount of tax is taken off. If you want some tax planning, you do an RSP, you might do a donation. It's very limited, it's very simple, right? It's kind of a one-line pony. Whereas when you enter retirement, you're gonna have CPP, OAS, maybe a, a RIF, a LIF, a pension plan. You have many income sources. And if you're married or common law, double that, maybe triple that sometimes with non-registered accounts. So what happens is you need to know, like what tap do I turn on full? What tap do I turn on a little bit? And how does everything kind of come down the funnel in the most efficient manner? And optimizing that retirement income is vastly important. Like there's a lot of strategy behind it and no two people are the same. Some strategies work among all people, but your numbers are gonna be different than mine and the next person, the next person. So you need to understand like, how much do I turn these taps on and how does everything funnel down to make sure that I have the most after-tax income in my pocket, I'm paying Sierra the least amount possible, and my estate plan is in a good situation when I die. The third thing that Fred talks about that I took out of this is decumulation strategies. And it kind of ties into my last point, but it's really how you draw things down in retirement make a big difference. Like hundreds of thousands of dollars. We've done plans where it's millions of dollar difference. And you might think, Adam, I only have you know, a few hundred thousand dollars saved in a small pension. How you strategically draw that down, decumulate that in retirement, time it with your CPP and OAS and everything else going on will make a big, big difference. So for those of you that are walking into retirement blindly, I encourage you, you need a plan. You need to have, you know, look at your CPP timing. You need an RRSP meltdown. I encourage you to have a laddered income strategy, which talks about, you know, that go-go phase of retirement early on. We want more money because we can spend it. And then slow go phase where things slow down a bit, you can still travel and in the no go phase, you wanna build that out. The RSP meltdown, that's where a lot of the tax savings happens. How do we draw stuff, decumulate stuff in a tax efficient manner? Again, Fred's book jumps into the RSP meltdown, the decumulation strategy. We've done a full video on the RSP meltdown and I encourage you to watch this to get more insight into how an RSP meltdown works.